So, thank you for joining us for almost the last session. <laughs> Mike, I think it's the last session, right? Before Joss, uh, the other event. And um, I'm here in place of Grace Francisco. Uh, I'm joined by another of uh, Grace's uh, teammates, for, uh, Fernanda, and, um, and, and one of our Dutch sub uh, developer evangelists, um, um, Marcel. And, uh, and some other folks that I'd like to definitely talk about uh, as part of our kind of, you know, participating in the Joomla community as we've gone forward, right? Uh, at where we got, how we got here, where were we before, etc. things like that. Um, I would like to try to make this as interactive as possible. So please shout out questions or um, please give suggestions on if you hear something and it's not quite you know, what you think we should do, please share your suggestions on how we could, like, you know, work better with you in the Joomla community. So, how many of you here, um, before this, have heard about Joomla actually working on any of the Microsoft platforms? Okay, that's good. Um, and uh, I'd just love to kind of give you guys an overview of where we are today and what we're doing with the Joomla community. And hopefully you have suggestions on where we can go. Um, so first thing is, who am I? Uh, my name is Jazz Sandu. Uh, I work on the interoperability and open source strategy team. Uh, we are a team inside the organization working out at Redmond, in, uh, our Redmond campus. And our job is really to work with communities, work with the standards organization, uh, work with partners. Some of the partners may not necessarily you think of as Microsoft partnering with. We would partner with them. Um, and it's uh, I run the Intro Vendor Alliance, for example. That you know, 63 of our work. best friends. Not even who most people think don't, we don't work with like no Red Hat, like uh, power, and uh, then uh, VMware, yes. things like that. So we we, we no really like uh, to. Uh, to kind of like, you know, basically any of our products working with non-Microsoft products, we're about that. And that's my Twitter handle, at JazzN. Um, I don't think the mic is working, so we'll, we'll just have to go without it. Um, so, Microsoft and open source. Um, our journey, sort of, is, has, been a, has been an interesting one, right? Uh, you all have heard Microsoft doesn't do open source, but quite frankly, there's actually a whole group of us inside the organization and many of the product groups now that actually do some sort of open source work. If it's not necessarily the product itself, it's some part of either getting an API out there, an SDK out there, um, and put it out in our open source forge. We have codeplex.com, and we also have a foundation we work with called Outer Curve uh, Foundation, previously named codeplex.org. So, uh, and it's just a foundation just like Apache and Eclipse. Uh, and those are the two foundations I work with myself. Uh, I work very closely with the Apache Foundation, Eclipse Foundation, to make sure that we land the right kind of projects on there, using their, uh, we use Apache licenses everywhere, for example, or the Eclipse license, when we can, and we do that based on what community we want to interact with. If it's the Eclipse community, we're going to plug it, uh, we'll use an Eclipse license, if it's the Apache community, we use Apache license, we use MIT licenses, BSD licenses, things like that. We've even contrib uh, contributed to GPL v2, uh, uh, code 20,000 20, lines code to Linux, and we had to use GPLv2 because that's what the community uses. Uh, we try not to use as many viral licenses as possible. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, that kind of we shy away. And if you talk to any commercial vendor, they probably will have a very, very similar stance. However, we're trying to find these gray areas where we can actually go out there and give the customers what they want. Um, so, any questions there before I go on? Nope, good. So, what do we uh, what do we do as part of um, of the recent uh, work was to get Joomla to work with SQL Server, and Sudi uh, was partnered with us, and actually we got introduced to Sudi through Lewis, right? Uh, Grace Francisco, who was supposed to give this presentation. Uh, worked with, uh, I guess, you know, talk to Louis. Louis, maybe you want to share a little bit of how that first interaction started? Uh, honestly, I don't remember. It was so long ago. Um, wow. Grace, <laughs> Grace and I have, have been talking for a long time and trying to find ways to help each other and certainly have Microsoft help us. Um, she approached me with looking for a way to get 
uh, Joomla running on a Microsoft stack, uh, certainly uh, SQL Server, and potentially the cloud stuff as well uh, with Azure. And uh, after talking with her for a little while, I suggested she contact Sue because he was already doing database abstraction work and uh, and showed that he was really interested in that sort of thing. And look what we've done. Wow. Um, Sudhi, you want to kind of share a little bit, maybe, about uh, sort of where that went then, the first yeah. connection? So prior to this uh, SQL Server, we, we had done, uh, we had taken Joomla 1.5 and ported it to Oracle database. And then uh, at that moment, we, you know, 1.6 was not yet ready and the release cycle was kind of hazy. So that's when uh, we decided let's Let's do it for 1.5. We just did the 1.5 for Oracle, and then uh, we were planning to port C1.6 to uh, MultiDB, starting with SQL Server because we had already done it for Oracle. So we wanted to try it out with SQL Server. Uh, kind of timing worked uh, when Microsoft contacted us, and then uh, uh, next uh, three four months we spent uh, working on uh, porting. On SQL Server, SQL Azure, and then native support for uh, Windows Azure as well. So, so basically now we have a multi-DB story with uh, Joomla and we're plugging into that. And that's how we're going to go forward. Um, we offer a PHP SDK for both SQL Server. Uh, and now with SQL Azure, we also provide uh, not only a PHP SDK for SQL Server to work with SQL Azure, we also have things like Azure Storage. Uh, if you hear about our cloud, we have a storage uh, component of our cloud and that has a PHP SDK for it. So we'd love to plug that also at some point and figure out what's the right ways to work. We also have a CDN network that you can actually connect to. Uh, and, and this will be a great, one of the many options you have, especially as we go into the cloud foray. Um, we'd like you to kind of tell us what we could do better to help support your platform. I do have to say though, there are some architectural decisions that are quite difficult. As you go to platforms as a services in the cloud, it's going to be a scale-out scenario rather than a scale-up scenario, as I was saying just now in the multi-DB session. It's difficult to see how some of these, uh, some of the open source projects are actually handling this. And the more we can work with you to, how, uh, to understand how you've addressed these issues, the better we can help you uh, be successful on our cloud, if not other clouds too, because the same architectural principles like being restful, not having state, being able to have instances recycle themselves are all very, very powerful uh, opportunities. Uh, another partner we work with is Arc Technology. And uh, what Arc Technology has done has taken some of our services, services in the cloud, uh, SQL Server reporting services, the SQL SSRS things, and things like Bing Maps, and provided extensions that plug into the Joomla side of things. And uh, if you go to ourneighborhood.org, uh, you'll see an example of that in action. And hopefully the demo gods are with me, and so are the internet Wi-Fi gods, too, and voila, wow. the site's coming up, right? So now you can like, you know, basically uh, go and check out one example of, you know, this website running with, uh, with uh, Bing. You notice that there's neighborhood videos, for example, on this side here, can you guys see this? This part here, right? For example, there are videos that are related to that neighborhood, but then there's also an extension, uh, there's also um, stuff you can do to interact with it by using the ZoomInt uh, plugins that uses our Photosynth technology, for example. And you can see how it's kind of, you know, easy zoom in, zoom out. And this is supposed to kind of help you, this is just, a, you know, kind of an example of how a website can integrate other services, and this is using Joomla. Right? Uh, and you know, you can um, kind of check out the businesses that are running, and there's a, you know, sort of, Bing is just another RESTful service that you can call and integrate your stuff. And now it's available as a Joomla extension, uh, which is really cool. And you can also have things like, you know, integrating with the Windows Live Messenger uh, as a pop-up and have your IM chats going on there. So it's quite a, quite a cool thing to have. And we hope to bring more and more services online that will allow communities such as yours to integrate. Any questions here?
And by the way, there's also single sign-on with RFID, and now with the Azure, we actually are supporting multiple different um, solutions that provide uh, single sign-on. And we also support WS Federation and SAML um, if you want to choose to do that. And we also work with our AD backends, uh, Active Directory backends, and you have customers that use that. So it's a really great way we can actually go from an on-premise solution out to the public solution. And these are all available to you in some form or another as an extension or just as a service you can plug in an SDK and API that you can, you can use. Um, now back to the presentation. Um, we also started working with the core team, and I'm going to plug Ryan, uh, because uh, open source matters. Uh, this is a picture of him at a web matrix launch, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, web matrix. Uh, we would like to start a cadence of regular feedback loops, and to make sure that what we are doing uh, to work with the Joomla community is the way the Joomla community works, and not another process. Um, and that's what we're doing with all the open source communities that we can get in touch with. Uh, we're also working with other uh, CMSs. We're also working with a whole bunch of uh, opportunities with some of the top apps that you see on, on, on the sites out there. Uh, and uh, my team is all about getting it working in, uh, in multiple ways. Uh, I'm, I'm specifically doing things on the cloud, but we have teams uh, internally that uh, want to make sure that Windows doesn't have any issues running open source software. And my whole mantra is very simple. If you work on Windows, especially Windows Server R2, Server 2008 R2, 64-bit, you will have no problems on the cloud because it's the, basically the same kernels running in a virtualized machine in the cloud. So that's how we do it. We check for, to see if it runs on Windows, and then it'll run on the cloud. Even better, we can run MySQL, but we can also make sure that run now, for example, running on SQL Server, they'll run our SQL Azure cloud, just as I mentioned before. Uh, Ryan, would you like to maybe like uh, share a little bit of an experience you had with the Web Matrix launch, and why did you guys uh, participate? Yeah. So uh, the Web Matrix launch. The other thing I was interested about the Web Matrix launch is that it was also held at a non-Microsoft event. It was held at uh, CodeMatch, mm -hmm. which is you know more of an open developer um, event, essentially. Right. Uh, and it was it was great to to be there from my perspective. Any chance I have an opportunity to showcase what we're doing in the Joomla community, that's a huge win. I will gladly you know, step on stage and say, here's what we're doing. Even better for something like this Web Matrix launch that lined up really well with the types of folks we have in our community that are trying to get up and running with Joomla, start on Joomla development, and the tool itself just aligns well with where they're, they're coming from. So for me to kind of be involved in that and also just start building connections, this, this gave us an opportunity to build connections with other CMSs, with folks we don't normally talk to, like .NET, Nuke, and Morocco, and some others that are on the .NET side. That has brought a totally different experience to at least um, my view as to what they're doing. Gives us new ideas of what we can bring to our community. And that's something we'd like to help share as much as possible. Learnings from other communities. What's commonalities? Uh, and of course, you guys have uniqueness to all the each individual communities. You know, I, it's not about like feature to feature comparison. There's something you do that's wonderful for your customers, and that's why they pick you. And there may be something that we can <laughs> add to help you reach a certain customer base that may be using our technology, but today is siloed from you. So I, I want to basically open up this opportunity for us to connect, to understand what common customer and partner needs are, and help you with that. Um, so I want to show you uh, basically uh, web, a little bit about what Web Matrix is. So you may have heard of our web platform installer. Anybody heard of our web platform installer? Basically, it's an easy way, and this is something that came from the PHP core community that we learned, was getting PHP configured on Windows was really, really hard. And was, was really difficult. Whoops, um, I didn't mean to skip a slide. I think the slide deck has a mind of its own. Um, the, what we heard from the PHP community was getting PHP down to Windows. Well, first of all, getting PHP to run optimally on Windows we needed to do some work. So there was a team that was making it uh, profiled uh, better to run on Windows. And the, during the PHP 5.2 time frame, um, it wasn't necessarily optimal because they were using older compilers or uh, you know the versions out here up to compile to Windows 
were not necessarily the best in class that we had to offer as Microsoft for you to run on this platform. So with 5.3, we started using, well, with 5.2, we started using our VC, uh, Visual Studio, uh, C++ compiler, uh, 6.0 version to make 5.2 work. And that came with its own things like, you know, because Visual Studio 6 was such uh, about, I would say, um, prior to 2001, uh, prior to 2000, yeah, uh, that you were finding that some of these DLLs weren't available and people had to go and bring out the DLLs to make it all work, etc. That, you know, people gave up and said, oh no, it doesn't work on Windows and just walked away, even, even though you had to do, just jump some hurdles to get there. With 5.3, we started using our latest compilers, our Visual Studio C++ 9.0 set of versions onwards, and that, that allowed uh, most of the current deployments of Windows, whether it was uh, Windows um, you know, 7 or Windows Vista, uh, to immediately be able to just run those things without DLLs being, having to be copied, etc. Still, that wasn't enough, because someone had to manually go to php.net bring down the PHP stack, right, and then manually install it, and then they had so many dependencies, and then if they were going to use Apache or IIS, they had to do a whole bunch of configurations, get Apache down with them. Uh, and so there were many pieces that they had to get, and it wasn't as, um, for, the, like for the Unix community, as natural to do these you know, installs. So we built the web platform installer to allow you to bring down PHP or an application, in this case Joomla, right? And you just pick Joomla, let's say. It will look for the Joomla version you have. It will look for the, the version of, of uh, PHP that it needs, whether it's 5.2 or 5.3. It will look for the MySQL. It will look for the SQL Server, if you have now a SQL Server support, or we do, which we don't have right now in the web matrix um, uh, deployment. But it will look for the dependencies you have, and it will download them from a feed that actually connects to the open source distributable main download page. So basically it's a wrapper that goes and picks up all these people, uh, pieces, assembles all your dependencies and installs it onto your desktop. And I want to give you a little bit of an uh, 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 showing you how this web matrix tool will do it. There's also a PI, as I mentioned. So I have um, I was waiting for my SQL to go, but I'll just start it with another one again. Uh, so here's what happens when you launch WebMatrix. The first thing you get is ability to create, modify, and update websites. You can either pick your own sites that you might have sitting right now, maybe a PHP directory or a subdirectory or a Joomla directory, and just, and just open this so you can edit the files directory. Or, and I'm going to talk about the site gallery uh, later, or from a template that you can create. And each one of these, so for example, the My Sites, you'll see that there's a default website. If I had another the website out there, it'll show up. Um, with the uh, site from template, oops. Ah, here we go. There are these type of starter sites. An empty site, a starter site, which has a, a few things you already have uh, pre-assembled. Uh, maybe a demo site, and you can actually create your own site templates. So there's a bakery for a, for a front, uh, bricks and mortar bakery website, there's a photo gallery, there's a calendar. But for the case of uh, for Joomla, and of, of course you can also open up a site from a, another folder somewhere, maybe it's on a directory share, etc. This is the cool part, the web gallery. Immediately, all of these applications you see are open source applications or applications that we provided that you can bring down by just looking at this menu and saying, I want one of these, right? And um, you know, they're, cate they're categorized like blogs, CMSs, right? So if I go click on that, it narrows it down, e-commerce, you can see all the different kinds of things we have available out there. And um, let's just go immediately to all because I saw Joomla right up there. And what this is going to do is when I click on Joomla first, and I hit next, and now of course you can give it a site name, and I'll just put this on Jab or something like that. What type of database would you use? Now, we only have MySQL with Joomla today, and with, with Sudi's work, we hope to have a SQL Server mainline somewhere, because this is going to your download binaries to get this. 
wherever the mirror is that you are making it available. Today, of course, there's only one database, and you can say, hey, do I want to install it here on my machine, or no, use a remote server, right? Uh, and what happens is, and of course, MySQL asks for an admin password, and I'm going to use a really secure one. <laughs> um, and you can probably guess what that is by that form. Uh, it's a probably one. Now, what happens is you have to accept the end user license first, right? Uh, so that you know, make sure that the, you are you're turning the right Windows components to, to be turned on, so that this the IIS, for example, and all that can get the right configuration settings. And you just watch this. Look, Joomla 1.6, 7.32 megabytes. Sound familiar? JoomlaCode.org. Can you see that uh, a little bit? It's not very clear. Let's let's see if I can zoom this. I don't think I can with this tool right now. But I have a, I have a magnifier somewhere. <laughs> Not the best, uh, best, uh, here we go. Magnifier, I want to put it inside, plus. <laughs> you guys are, 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 you Play the double. I have to do the Vulcan death group. Mm -hmm. uh, so, right. So it's coming from Joomla code and from MySQL, right? So, so what other things it does is actually I've, I've already downloaded other components that you can have, and you can have other dependencies that you might use. For example, an extension you might want to go add on there could actually publish themselves out here and get other things that it would need from maybe other libraries out there. So. Um, I'm going to zoom out of this guy again. And um, while I'm there, I'm going to go next. Next again to um, there. Once you accept, what it's going to do now is actually go there, suck the, mm -hmm. the stream, and get the binary down to this. And by the time, I won't have time to complete this install, but you'll have Joomla running configured with MySQL on your desktop. And that's why we do this. Well, the reason why we're doing this is because our customers are saying that you don't work with open source. And we can't get our stuff installed on your stuff. Well, we say, well, let's help you. And what, uh, what this tool also does is it lets you edit your site. So you can edit the PHP, you can kind of go do things there, and of course run the site itself and do what you you guys do with Joomla, right? Create content, uh, add extensions, etc. Things like that. And once you get Joomla down, it's pretty easy, right, to get all those things. I would say. You would say with the Joomla community, say it's pretty easy to consume extensions, etc. From Joomla itself, right? Yeah. yeah. So we can go there. Now today, Joomla on Windows since. On Windows Server or Windows on the desktop, uh, we we recommend uh, things like Windows Seven, Windows Server, to, uh, to Windows Server two thousand eight or two. Um, we use IIS, and IIS now with PHP has fast uh, <coughs> because of fast CGI support in IIS, we can run PHP, and we've also made available a caching system for PHP, so you have a mem cache like equivalent um, on on the stack. And of course, we will can run a database like MySQL and any other database out there. But right now, the matrix only understands that you have MySQL. Uh, and of course, the PHP stack, and of course, Joomla on top of it. Joomla and MultiDB is a, a very, very exciting thing for us. And thank you to Lewis, Ryan, Sudi, especially, for doing the implementation. Uh, it's, I know you went through, um, you know, um, a lot of learning, right, to get on this side. So maybe Sudhi, you can like kind of share. Come up front, actually. Let's get you on camera <laughs> uh, on this one because I know you uh, you have a, 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 a lot, a lot uh, you can share on this side. Yeah. Uh, do you want to open up the customer? Do you want me to open up the cloud, uh, the enterprise Joomla VPC site? Okay, let's let's do that.
So you can kind of, you know, do yeah. your... This is the site, uh, this is a brown printing company. They, they have this, uh, their existing IT assets is on uh, MySQL and Windows. Uh, most of their assets, or most of their web assets is based on uh, SQL Server. So they saw the blog post and all that on Joomla.org and then they contacted us. And uh, there is one thing which we are going to go live in the next six weeks. Uh, which will replace the existing ppc.com and uh, MySQL. And to do that, uh, there are a couple of plugins which are simple for plugins, the Google Analytics plugins. Uh, the most important part was the RS form that they were using to capture the request record uh, thing. Uh, that is something that we have uploaded to SQL Server. Uh, there are a few minor things that we are working through, uh, but uh, to a large extent it works the way it work in the previous uh, website. And then the other thing is, um, uh, in addition to that, during the course of this uh, uh, coding Joomla to MultiDB, uh, contacted uh, DS Curry, uh, Rafael, uh, and then uh, created a database branch with him. Uh, again, on the end of branch, uh, they have created a branch, uh, I have created a MultiDB branch uh, to support um, you know, Tianda to different uh, databases. That is something I'm working with them. Then the other one is um, HWD Media Share. I've been working with him for a couple of other projects, and I contacted him, and uh, he has given me access to his version to port the media extension to SQL Server and Windows Azure. The interesting part is, uh, you know, Joomla is. Uh, it's kind of an ideal platform for publishing standpoint. So uh, a media extension, a video extension, and a photo extension would make a lot of sense. And uh, posting it on an Azure cloud for CDN and all that uh, gives us a lot of capabilities in terms of scaling up. So that's one reason why we have taken the ownership, working with them, working with this uh, community uh, to get it up. So, Sudhi. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you, and I asked you this question before for, for, for the audience, is how, how much time did you take and was it difficult? For, for doing, uh, what do you, so you took a while, right? Like nine, nine months, you said, and uh, Yeah, it, it was during like, uh, la, I think we've been working for the last six, seven months, uh, focused on the DB work, uh, but then, uh, you know, a lot of them was like testing, uh, working with the, team, core team to get their feedback and stuff like that. So it was fairly simple coding into SQL Server or any other database except few challenges, in the <coughs> technical challenges like the data types and things like that. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. In the, to a large extent, the DB framework that uh, Louis and his uh, group had built was in place. It's just that, uh, you know, some of the places did not use the DB framework the right way. It was all hard-coded to my team. So maybe the call to action. Anybody here extension developers? Yeah. Right. So call expert, uh, call for to you is... Does, uh, CCK, SOBI tool. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you using also Windows or SQL Server? No. Right? no? Oh. Well, one of the things we ask the extensions then is to use the work that you guys have created, Lewis and now uh, Sudhi's participating in, to create your extensions, because it will help us not only on Windows but on the cloud to get if you need customers who have this need, right? So um, thank you, Sudhi, yeah, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about the iCloud cloud stuff. Thank but you. there's another great stuff here that you know it's kind of nice to see in the the Sudhi stock just now of the admin console supporting CDNs. I didn't even realize actually the CDN selector was there, and Windows Azure and a Amazon, I guess, are the two that's up there. And I'm quite excited because we have a, a very pervasive, you know, 140 countries CDN available, and things like jQuery are available on our CDNs uh, that you can just pluck as a namespace. So, you know, it's it's all goodness, and hopefully we can have you guys use this as you know. And CDNs are read only, so you have to kind of still have the storage and the front end to do the right things, right? Uh, so it's it's quite it's quite an amazing opportunity here. Um, so now we're going, and what we're doing now, as you mentioned, was take that work that's on the MultiDB on Windows and work it with Windows Azure. 
And I like to say it's only a connection string away. And that's what it really is. <laughs> right? Um, and that's of course, uh, and, and what it is is if you work on SQL Server, you can work on SQL Azure. Uh, and now with Windows Azure, um, it's, we can run Joomla code on top of our, uh, of our Windows Azure cloud as a platform, as a service. All you do is package up the Joomla and add it up there. And we're going to make it even easier. Uh, we have this thing called the Windows, uh, uh, Windows Azure Platform Companion that allows you to very quickly bring up a virtual machine that knows how to look at feeds just like the web matrix did. And from your download page, joomlacode.org, bring it to the cloud and install it on there. And, uh, and uh, it's just basically just that. It's a web space away, right? A web a URI away for you to get your, uh, your Joomla stuff out there. And we're working on high availability. So right now, we have working on a single instance. We're working on the multi-instance. We're very close to do that. And hopefully, we can scale it out with other scenarios like CDNs and also uh, using some of our storage proximity opportunities. And we have uh, data centers uh, right now uh, in North America, Europe, and um, Asia Pacific, NZ, uh, and Japan support, and for NZ, uh, Australia, New Zealand. So Website Spark. Um, Website Spark is, a, is basically a program that is available to those of you who create websites, which is you know, practically all of you, um, to get the tools that we provide, SQL, Expression, Visual Studio, um, at a, at a, at I would like to say free, but it's not because it's actually a three-year program. You can use it for as much as you want, as long as you're at a certain, um, I think, growth level. And then after that, it's like $99 for the materials uh, or material costs for us to procure them and costs for you. And that's it. Uh, and you can get all these things that, that you need to start developing with Windows and with SQL Server using this program. And we have some brochures at the, at the booth that you can pick up and learn a little bit about the offerings there. I won't go into detail. Or go to this website. And if you have any questions, please come and talk to us afterwards. OK? Um, any questions? Nope. So I'm, actually, this is, this, is, this is what we have to share today. Um, and we are very, very excited to work with all of you in the Joomla community. And hopefully we can start showing you more and more progress and a good cadence hopefully through this continuous uh, feedback loop that we've created with a lot of you here um, to make it better uh, for the Joomla community. And we're quite excited about the work that has happened in 1.6, which we have now, and coming in 1.7 with the MultiDB solution. Um, here's some, some resources for you. Um, Microsoft slash web slash Joomla is actually quite interesting because remember I mentioned web matrix just now? There's also this web platform installer. You just have to go to Microsoft.com slash web slash Joomla and we have a page for you. Right? Um, so that your customers will find it easy to find the uh, find the Joomla stack on there. And again, we're all about creating, customizing, and publishing. So you create your stuff, you can use web matrix to modify or your own tools of course and then publish it and make it easy to web deploy or uh, put it on our hosting gallery, which you saw just now, um, or in, uh, in the web matrix stuff. Or you can see it in, like, for example, uh, if you look at the, for the featured apps or browse all the apps, you can, you can see our gallery here has all of those things you saw just now on the web matrix uh, tool. So I would uh, I'd like to go back to this. Uh, I want, I'd like to talk about Website Spark with you guys. Maybe come to the booth and we can discuss how you, uh, you can benefit from it. And uh, please contact me. That's my Twitter handle. It's also my alias at Microsoft. It's also my alias for everything, like LinkedIn, Facebook. Just with jazz in there, you'll find it. Uh, and Grace Francisco, who was going to give this session, is, um, is a great, great resource for, um, for anything related to Joomla because she is now our business development manager so that she can work with you to understand what your customer, partner, or your own needs are as a business 
and with Microsoft and understand how we go forward. So with that, do you have any questions? I would like to say that uh, when we build the, the, the Joomla in Spanish and we uh, put it in the gallery, yes, and it was very, very easy to do it because it was just building an, an XML file. Uh -huh. So that was great. And just a recommendation uh, for you, yes. because for the people of the uh, gallery, is that the, the they have the approval, it's very easy because it, uh, it's an automated form, so it was great, but it took like almost a month to get the approval from Microsoft, so if you can work on improving that, that will be great for, for us. So what I'm hearing is to improve our timeline on submissions. Yeah, that's something that I'm working on. Uh, Grace from Cisco, she's my manager, she's basically you know, the point contact person, and she's the one that will like, reach out to the right agency with Microsoft. It's huge organization. So, Grace is the one who will make sure that it happens. So we're part of that discussion because we want to target as soon as possible, right? Really? Um, so we're getting better and better. Like for example, we have one, I think it was last week, that lasted two days to get updated. Like for the minimum we got it. Yes. So we are getting better. So that's great for them to have to you. So go out to the team and manage that <laughs> and tell them what one this is. Yeah, and we, we, we have, we started, right? And we're going to get better as we go along because for a lot of these things, it was the first time we were going to inspect what was going to go happen on Windows. So once it's done, let's say it's part of the community and there's a localized version, we may not be scrubbing as much anymore uh, to go look through and say, hey, are they really the same? You know, you can't just do a diff on the files, as they say, right? Uh, you know, it's more than that. So it's a, a, it's a process. Uh, we could get better, and I agree about that. Thank you very much for all that feedback. Anybody else? <coughs> Anything to share? Right. So, um, it was just reminding me of this, but I think that Microsoft has actually contributed GPL code in the form of the WinCache support. For That's a good point, yes. Um, I'm going to have to confirm that, yes, but it, yeah, you're... you're I th yeah, my understanding is that uh, the, that was one of the... That was the first contribution that you guys made to us. To the for the PHP community well, or to no, the for Joomla, like the, the WinCache driver for our caching system. Uh, at least Sam told me that uh, it was contributed by. People. Yes, because you require that uh, for your projects, and I believe yeah, we WinCache wrapper or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So as part of the JCA one, yeah. So, so we try I, and find the right kind of license, right? right. No, and I, I just I want to say that I think that that's, that's awesome. And I think that people in the community knew that Microsoft is doing support and help and work like that as well. And those, even those very small... Oh, right, right, okay. That's, that's, that's really, really good. So thank you. The comments say, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, when, when you say WinCash, I was like, wait, no, it's not. Uh, right. but the, the, yes, the, yes, the layer right. for your guys, yeah. Right. Yeah. WinCash was a major, major improvement for us to be able to run on the Windows set. It was, I, I mean, it was night and day, so it's, it's been awesome. I'm glad to hear that. We'll share that with the IIS team. Uh, Rosalind will be very happy to hear that. Um, we, we're trying. Uh, we're trying to find the same fidelity that you might find on any other platform. Well, we'll work hard on getting that done. Um, the experience, however, the user experience and how the right way to work with your community is something we have to work and collaborate with you on. And we have to learn, we have so much to learn. Um, and so the closer you can, or the tighter the feedback, the more you can share these kind of concerns or unique you know, issues, the more we can be uh, successful together, right? Uh, sometimes they say, that, you know, the more specific you are, the more terrific you can get. So we try and you know, really understand not the general stuff, but the real technical issues and get over those hurdles. Or the business issues. Because uh, a lot of our customers are using, you know, common stuff like Joomla now in the same, you know, same data center as a Windows Server rack, and they're not talking to each other. What do we do? Let's get that working, right? Yes. And just the other, the other question is, uh, you know, for what the last 40 minutes we had a good overview of sort of things, that, the ways in which Microsoft's been getting involved. But there's so often at events like this, I'm going around, and people are whispering. Like, What's Microsoft doing an open source event? Why is Microsoft involved in Joomla? Do you guys have a 60 seconds or less like statement, thought, vision as to why my 
Microsoft is involved in Joomla that folks like us, when we hear that, can say, well, this is why. I believe, um, so this is me speaking and probably not, uh, you know, sort of a public a statement. I would love to give that vignette to you and sure. we'll work on that, but we, we understand that you all have a choice on what platform you can use. We want to make sure, however, uh, that you are able to use our platform effectively and not, like I said just now, not have a bad experience trying to get things working and twiddling the right knobs and be unsuccessful and then leave. So that's one for me. That's, you know, let's have your experience on our platform. It's all of them, right? Windows, the server, uh, uh, up on the cloud, to be more, uh, you know, usable. That's one, and that's why we're doing it. Because some of some of our common customers, and this is the other thing, we have common interests. We have customers that are using our things and using your uh, community's work, extension to Juma, that may not choose you because they're on Windows or the vice versa. Won't you know pick Joomla and say, sorry, we can't use your services because it's Joomla doesn't use you. That's the best thing for us. Why are we coming to these events is we want to share our story just like I'm doing here and get direct feedback because we understand at communities that, like this, people like Lewis and Ryan and all the extension guys are here. We get directly connected to you. I get a card. It's just the same thing that Fernanda said about, you know, if you contact us, we'll push the, the knobs for you because we want to work with your community. Right? And we're going, you know, we have the right people working with you. So I think it's just, you know, there's something we, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way street we want to create, not a one-way, hey, we're going to take, you know, we're going to, we're going to buy you, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, that's what I hear all the time. And uh, no, it's not that. It's, it's about us collaborating with the open source community. We've had a bad rap. You know, we don't want to do it again. We don't want to... It's, a, it's har harder to retain a customer. It's harder to retain a customer you have lost. I mean, it's harder to go win back trust with a customer that you've lost than to keep customers that are currently working with you well. And we want to work with you well, right? Um, and that's that's what we're about, right? Any other questions? No. Come on. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm not a full time developer, um, but I, I develop some, some extensions and you know, I, I play with PHP and stuff. It's, it's uh, but I used Linux. We, we talked about that before you started. Yes, sir. We had a great presentation. One thing I, I really love about uh, Linux or Unix or what I use is that. I can test everything that I am using, I'm, I'm uh, developing, I, I can do I, I can re uh, reduce what the client is going to, to have in the Apache server, in the server, and it's, it's very nice. I think when, uh, I'm not, uh, I have not, I have zero experience in developing on Windows, so maybe I'm developing something that is already solved, but you have tools for the developers to, of PHP developers, I, I mean, to, to help them to, to de develop on Windows and to test their, their uh, developments on IIS, uh, on Apache, in Windows, or, you know what? Uh, yes, I understand what you're saying. So uh, I, I, I don't know. I think that's, that's a good point for a developer of a, a website builder to Starting on the server, you have to test everything. Because I have seen Webmatics is for Windows Server, and well, not everyone has Windows Server. Right. Um, so here's me as a as a technical evangelist from an interoperability team perspective, because I've been using a lot of these servers you mentioned. Um, Yes, it's difficult. That's why we have web matrix to bring down those things, but they end up with the same directory structure as you would typically imagine it to be 
on Unix. Of course, we use left slashes and right slashes and left and right and uh, We have different commands for how we do our directories, you know, no ls la or whatever, right? We, PowerShell actually does that. So <laughs> it's not bad if you have Windows 7 and PowerShell or we, uh, if you download PowerShell. It, it could be better, it could be much easier, but what we're trying to do is build that same fidelity that you have had on other platforms. Like, we're using the same code structure you have, the directory structure, the way you list your, 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 uh, you know, your components, extensions, etc., where you put things. And we hope that you can X copy deploy, as they say, you know, just drop that tree onto Apache or your SSH or F F SFTP, whatever your tool of choice is, and have that same fidelity. Where it doesn't work will be very unique to here. Uh, because, when, you know, what, that's what we're trying to do. Apache runs on Windows. You can actually get an Apache.exe uh, file on there. Yeah, some people say that sometimes, you know, I have to do some port settings, IIS is taking on the main port, all that this stuff. That's as IT admin type stuff we need to do. As users, we're hoping that what we're doing with WebMatrix is the easiest path because most of those stack parts that you saw in the stack I drew earlier, this one, Right? We've, we're pretty good at configuring up to this level. So we can make that really work for you. And even the cloud, right? We have this part. So we don't do Apache because we don't really have a profile in Apache way that we can run on. on uh, we just use Apache spec for Windows. So we have to work with the Apache uh, community to actually make that work better. I actually work with um, uh, the vice chairman of the Apache uh, Foundation right now, Greg Stein. Uh, because the current security, and it's in this current security patch, we actually submitted that. There was a throttle saying this is a, oh it's IE, and IE had a bad uh, implementation of something, let's say, a connection or something, a timeout thing. And it's been around since um, way back in like uh, IE6 time frame. And we've had 7, 8, 9 and fixed that. Right? No timeouts happening. Well, guess what? That same comment was there. <laughs> making it go slow. So everybody was saying, oh yeah, Apache is faster. Uh, Apache is uh, IE slow on, uh, on Apache. Well, we took off that comment on the new security patches and thought that's not a problem. We actually do better than some of the browsers out there. Uh, that's one example, right? I want to do the same thing for you guys. Even on the Apache stack app, right? This is what we know best as Microsoft. So we want to make sure that uh, your experience is good. We keep the same fidelity as the tools you use. That's why we're working with the Joomla community. So that when we replicate that on our servers, you have the same experience you have on any other platform. Yeah, it's, there are some Unix to Windows things that we have to overcome. But let's hope that the stuff that you write, your apps, your business logic, doesn't have to go through a rewrite, doesn't have to go through a breaking change. And that's what I love about the multi-DB solution, right? Now you're getting a layer of abstraction that you can write to that doesn't matter what database you use. It just knows that you need to write to Joomla, you need to write to the multi-DB, um, you know, multi-DB style of doing things. Does that make sense? Did I kind of answer your question? And I'd love to get examples, if you have an example for us. Oh, this broke. I just copied this to Windows, why doesn't it work? Or how come these configurations don't work? And actually, I'd love to share with you a little bit more of how IIS now does deployments, because you can kind of see, hey, it's not that hard, it's the same actually. Maybe it's just a little bit different, uh, but most of it could be the same. Yeah? Anybody else? No? Well, with that, I want to first of all thank you all on inviting me to Jay and beyond to, um, to give my other session and this session uh, and our team. Grace is also very happy, is very upset she can't be here. <laughs> she has another uh, commitment. But um, you guys have been so open, so welcoming. I've made many friends already. You guys all have my Twitter handle, so hopefully I can follow you back uh, if you follow me. Um, it, and I want to start these, this two-way conversation more and more. Uh, we can do it over beers, we can do it over food, uh, we can do it in your offices <laughs> if you want. Uh, that, that would be great. So thank you very much and I hope you have a great rest of the conference. Thank you.